So they say Porsches make great daily drivers. They're fast, they're comfortable, they have all the amenities, they look great, they ride great, they sound great. They're reliable enough to be a daily driver and oftentimes they have a rear seat to carry more than just two passengers. Driving, driving this thing every day, it's, it's exploited some issues for sure. I guess that's to be expected with 150,000 miles in a, you know, 22 year old car. However, this hasn't exactly been the case with my 996 911 Turbo. Don't get me wrong, huge fan of this car, especially in the speed yellow, the turbo fashion with the manual transmission. Yeah, the, the fact is the car just hasn't been too terribly reliable for me. Well, we've got no gas. We got a check engine light, PCM light, and ABS light. Are they all generically tied together? Who knows? I'll find out, but I'm gonna fill this up with gas and show you guys the problem every time I fill it up, which is often because this thing doesn't exactly get great gas mileage. It's kind of weird being able to film over here because normally there's the 997, but that's gone because it's getting painted right now. So the garage feels nice and spacious, but it's still cluttered with a ton of 997 turbo parts. Do you think this is a good daily driver? No. Well, why do you hate it? Besides the fact that it looks like mustard, which I hate. Um, I can feel every bump that we go through. Um, it's loud as hell. I feel like I'm at, you know, center stage of a rock concert. I'm, I'm used to driving a Jeep and this feels like I'm literally like on the ground. We're breaking up. So here's a normal startup. Sat here for like an hour and a half, right? Fires right up, no problem. Now watch what happens when I fill it up with gas. floods itself that's a problem it's also still having some idle issues see it will eventually come down come on keep coming keep coming the idle the idle hangs i thought i had it fixed when i did the throttle reset but it's kind of gone back to its old way so hopefully it has something to do with the whole gas filling up evap something or other and now it's being normal first things first let's see what these check engine lights are on for see what codes come up EVAP system vent control circuit, P0446. P1411 secondary air injection system, and P0410 air system A. The EVAP canister, gas filler neck, and other emissions items are located in the passenger side front wheel well, so I thought that was a good place to start. Reading open is that, what does that mean exactly? There's no continuity through the circuit, so the- Is that the how it should be right now? No. Oh. Yeah, you should have a couple ohms. Um, the solenoid's like a coil of small wire. Okay. And it should have like three or four ohms in it. I don't know exactly for this car, uh, but open circuit means that wire's broken somewhere. It's reading open, which is like, okay, the thing's defective. We believe we diagnosed a faulty vent valve solenoid. That's what Donald was testing. Since the wheel is off, I actually wanted to raise the front end of the car up because that's another thing that this car doesn't do well with its daily drivability is the front's just too low and the wheels and tires are rubbing, especially going over harsh bumps. 
Luckily, with these coilovers, it's a quick turn of some wrenches, and I can get it raised up about a half an inch. And I can't say enough good things about these KW coilovers. They ride phenomenally and also handle really well. And it's not too harsh like you're driving a track car. It's just right, in my opinion. I believe the ride height now is about perfect. It's really where it was when I first installed the coilovers. They had just settled a little bit over the past few months. The fix for my fuel fill up issue arrived. At least I thought it did. It turns out this may not have been an issue all along, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Here I'm installing a new fuel tank bleeder valve, which I thought had the EVAP solenoid on it, but it obviously didn't after it arrived, but I figured I'd have it. I might as well replace it. That could be causing a number of issues as well. You see, engines have a lot of emissions controls on them to help emit CO2 and other gases. The EVAP system is part of that. The purge valve is between the fuel tank and the intake manifold and is connected to the EVAP system. It's controlled by the engine and typically opens at specific temp or RPM. When it opens, it allows fuel vapors to come from the canister into the intake manifold. This is all part of the emissions process. So I think what mine was doing is just staying open constantly, and every time I filled the car up with gas, it was sucking all of that out of the evac canister directly into the engine, flooding it. Now if you watch this ad, not only are you going to get a sneak peek of the 997 fresh back from paint, but you're going to get, well, information on a great product that every car should have in it. This video is sponsored by LossFit, and this is their portable tire inflator, and this thing is awesome. It's only this big, and can inflate your tires in your car, and it's battery powered. What more do you want? It comes in this really nice, small, compact case. It comes with everything you need to fill up, well, any kind of tire. You can fill up a basketball, a football, etc. It comes with the chargers. You can charge it in your house, you can charge it in your car with the 12 volt adapter. It's got a fantastic digital display with battery indicator and it's got a flashlight on it. And if that wasn't enough, you can use this to charge your portable devices with the USB ports. Before shipping the car off for paint, I actually had to use this because I had, well, many, many low slash flat tires. And this rear one was absolutely flat. And even with the engine spewing coolant all over this portable tire inflator, it filled it up to 34 PSI without issue. Big thanks to Lost Fit for sponsoring this video. I've used their bulbs in many vehicles and they're awesome. And this portable tire inflator is just as good. Check out the link in the description to get yourself one of those. Every car should have one. What I want to address right now is what's in this box. It's a new purge valve. And hopefully that fixes a lot of problems I'm having with the car. Admit, guys, diagnosing problems on vehicles is not my strong suit. In fact, it's probably the thing I'm least good at when it comes to working on cars. You tell me what's wrong with the car and you give me the part, I'm pretty certain I can fix it. You tell me there's a problem with the car and you don't know what the problem is, well, it's going to take me a bit longer than an actual professional mechanic to diagnose it. So that's why this issue has been rearing its head for a while because I wasn't able to diagnose it and I'm hoping this fixes the problem. And to do that, well, I need to lower the engine. It's not my most favorite thing to do. You see the purge valve is right about there, but like six inches back and there's absolutely no access to it at all. So to get access, this thing's gotta go down. You're thinking to yourself, man, you have to lower the engine to work on top of it. Well, Porsche actually makes it really easy to do so. Do I love doing it? No, but it's not horrible.
with a jack under the engine to support it. It's just two 19 millimeter nuts on the engine mounts. Lower the jack and the engine is down and more easily accessible. Now, from what I see, I don't see anything that's disconnected or any torn wires, no torn vacuum lines. I open just this valve is just purely and simply shot. That's what I hope at least. Even with additional clearance up top, this thing isn't exactly easy to wrestle out of there. You still gotta get in there with pliers and manipulate clamps. Not fun. There we go. Alright. Part looks the same. Plug is the same. Whew, that does not want to move. Open a little heat might help. Just pulling it off would be easier. This thing was not easy to get off. I guess 16 years of it being in a hot engine bay, heating and cooling over and over again had made the plastic, well, almost like glue. All right, after some cutting and some heating and some finagling, I got it on there and it looks like new and it's nice and sealed. I just used a different clamp because I wanted to get a little more pressure on there, but yeah, it's got a seal. Let's install it. The install was pretty straightforward. The toughest part is just getting the clamps in place and making sure that they're tightened and we don't have any leaks in the future. But after that's done, it's just a matter of getting the engine lifted back up, bolted back in, and the air box reinstalled. And I have to give a shout out to Renline Parts as I've been using their motor mounts for a while now and I absolutely love them. My old mounts were shot, the new ones are nice and firm, but not too firm and I don't get a lot of NVH. They're just right in my eyes. I'll have a link for them below. I've mentioned them before, but if you guys didn't see them, these jack stand wall mounts are the bee's knees. They're cheap and available on Amazon. I'll link them below. With the car back on the ground, I can reinstall the airbox, which is a breeze, and then move on to see if, well, I fixed anything. All wrapped up, time to fire it up. Gotta clear the codes. Can't take it for a drive because it's raining out and it's dark and I don't want to disturb the neighbors. Anyway, you can hear the rain. It's coming down pretty hard. I don't remember what the codes were before, but we're about to find out what codes are here now. And there we have it. EVAP system vent control circuit, secondary air injection air system A, idle control of RPM higher than expected. So hopefully these are all related to the purge valve. All right, let's fire it up. Well, it's idling good. So it's idling perfect, but sometimes it would idle perfect, other times it wouldn't. I also reset the throttle position sensor, so we won't really know until I go to fill it up with gas, which it needs right now. To be perfectly honest, I don't have a lot of faith that this fixed the issue, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to go get gas right now. and. That will pretty much immediately tell me if I fixed it, but the car seems to be running right. The idle seems good, but the idle was good sometimes, previously. foot on the gas. It 
is fixed. Holy crap, boys. I can't believe that worked. Mmm, yes. I'm so freaking happy that worked. I gotta drive it for a bit and see if all the wonky idle issues are fixed. Which I'm hoping they will be. Man, I can't believe. I really can't believe that was the issue. And I can't believe that that fixed it. I didn't know if I had like a check valve backwards or something else was messed up with vacuum line crisscrossed. But I think that's it, boys. That makes me feel really happy. Now, will the check engine light come back for a different reason? That's very well possible. But only time will tell. Fix one thing, and of course, something else breaks or was already broken. The ABS and, and uh, PCM, whatever failures, have been popping up intermittently. I don't know why. That's something else I gotta dive into. I was hoping it was connected to the check engine light. Turns out, it's not. 